Hello everyone, and welcome to another Hawkridge Systems Tech Tip. This is Jacob Ames, Applications Engineer. If you've been struggling with loft or boundary features in SOLIDWORKS, this video is for you. Known for being two of the more complex features in the program, loft and boundary features often require precise selections and careful sketch management for the most accurate and attractive results. In this video, we'll be covering three simple strategies that you can use to take your loft and boundary features to the next level while avoiding errors and bad geometry. So let's get right into it with step number one, selecting profiles in consistent locations. Now with simpler features such as extrudes and sweeps, you may have been able to get away with selecting sketches in the feature manager or the graphics area without really giving too much thought to specifically where you clicked on the sketch when selecting. With loft and boundary features, we have to be much more precise in how we select sketch profiles, even in relatively simple scenarios. Let's consider a loft between these two sketches. When making my profile selections, if I simply select the sketches from the Feature Manager design tree, I get some pretty strange results, as you can see here. This result is also similar to what you might see if you chose these profiles graphically, but at inconsistent locations. One of the major keys to a successful loft, or boundary, is selecting profiles in consistent locations, ideally at endpoints that are shared by corresponding sketch entities. You'll typically want to avoid selecting entire lines, arcs, etc. Now notice the difference in the resulting geometry when the profile selections are consistent. This technique can absolutely make or break a loft or boundary feature, and it's critically important that you remember this for good results. If you have difficulty deciding where to select your profiles, imagine tracing lines between the profiles to create wireframe geometry. Where would the lines start and end? Those should be your selection points, and this should help guide you to consistent profile selections. Step number two ensure all profiles have the same number of sketch entities. Now this step is often overlooked even by experienced SOLIDWORKS users and can be the difference between a perfect loft or boundary and one that fails completely. When loft profiles are selected properly, connectors are added between matching points in each profile, usually at the endpoints shared by each pair of sketch entities. So long as the total number of sketch entities in each profile is the same, this process is typically automatic, and the type of sketch entity isn't important. You can have lines, arcs, splines, you name it. It's the total number in each profile that matters. In this example, the lower profile is a simple rectangle consisting of four line segments, while the upper profile consists of two lines, one arc, and one spline, for a total of four sketch entities. Since each profile contains four sketch entities, four connectors are automatically mapped to corresponding points, and our work is done. When this is not the case, however, bad geometry is nearly unavoidable, and we have to make some modifications to the sketch profiles to make the number of sketch entities consistent. To do this, we have three tools at our disposal. Split entities, segment, and fit spline. Let's take a look at split entities first. Here we have two profiles. One is a single continuous spline, the other is a square. The spline consists of only one sketch entity while the square has four. Creating a loft from these profiles as they are, you can see that the result is rather irregular, even when I do my best to make consistent profile selections. Essentially, there aren't any shared endpoints in the spline profile for the connectors to attach to, like there are in the square. The split entities command can help us solve this by breaking individual sketch entities into multiple pieces. Split Entities isn't available in the Command Manager by default, although you can always customize your interface to include it. And like the other commands we'll be covering, it can only be used while editing a sketch. So to use Split Entities, first edit a sketch, then navigate to Tools, Sketch Tools, Split Entities. Once active, simply click a sketch entity in the position where you would like to split it, then confirm the command. These split points that you're adding can be moved freely with a click and drag, or they can be constrained using sketch relations, dimensions, or construction geometry as required. In this case, I split the spline four times using construction geometry to line up the split points and effectively breaking it up into four equal segments to make it consistent with the square profile. The end result, as you can see here, is a symmetric model with predictable geometry, and everything looks good to go. This would essentially be impossible without splitting the spline profile, so make sure to keep the split entities command in your tool belt. So what about the segment command? How does that fit in? Segment is similar to split entities in that it can be used to break sketch entities into multiple pieces with one additional detail. It breaks them into equal segments. This tool is particularly useful when you don't need the flexibility of being able to manually position the split points. Similar to split entities, you won't find segment in the command manager by default, but it's in the same location as split entities. Tools, sketch tools, 
segment. Now when you use this command, at least in the context of loft and boundary features, ensure that the sketch segments option is enabled. The sketch points option is useful, but it doesn't split the sketch, instead only adding reference points and we want to actually split the sketch up into multiple pieces. Then simply click on the sketch entity you'd like to segment and confirm the command. This command can be super effective as an alternative to split entities when you've got symmetry in mind too. Now sometimes it may be necessary to use either split entities or segment commands even when the number of sketch entities in your profiles are the same. This is often the case when connection points in your profiles don't match up the way you'd like, which is the scenario we're running into here. We've got two square profiles, same number of entities, but they're rotated 45 degrees with respect to each other. If we create a loft with no sketch modifications, what you'll see here is that the result is twisted. If we want to eliminate this, we can, in, we can use split entities, or in this case segment, to produce eight connection points in each profile, and we find that the end result is very different. So there's a number of different reasons to consider using these two tools. Finally, we have the fit spline command. Split entities and segment are great for breaking up a sketch entities, but what if you want to combine sketch entities? That's where fit spline comes in, and just like the name suggests, fit spline literally fits a spline onto your original sketch geometry, combining any included sketch entities into one single piece. In this scenario, our lower profile is once again a rectangle with a total of four sketch entities. On the other hand, our upper profile consists of two horizontal lines, four vertical lines, and two pairs of tangent arcs, bringing us to a total of 10 sketch entities for this profile. While we could break up the rectangle using split entities or segment, it would be very difficult to position the split points perfectly, and the resulting geometry would likely have some issues. Instead, we can use the fit spline command to convert the chains of vertical lines and tangent arcs in the upper profile into two continuous splines for a total of four sketch entities matching the rectangle. Again, fit spline is not available in the command manager by default, so to use it, edit a sketch first, then navigate to tools, spline tools, fit spline. Once active, simply select the sketch entities you'd like to join together. If the entities are intended to form a closed contour, make sure to enable the closed spline option. In this case, I've left that disabled. Uh, typically, delete geometry is also left unchecked, leaving the original sketch entities intact as construction geometry. Then, decide how the resulting spline should be constrained to the original geometry. Finally, set the tolerance field to an acceptable value. Lower tolerance values will result in closer approximations to the original geometry, but the spline may lack smoothness. Once completed for both sides of the sketch, the profiles can be selected just like they were in the previous examples, and you can see that the resulting geometry has turned out very nicely. As a quick review, we've covered split entities, segment, and fit spline commands, which can all be used to modify sketch profiles for lofts and boundaries, ensuring that they have a consistent number of sketch entities. In addition to selecting loft and boundary profiles at consistent locations, these tools should get you off to a great start and will likely result in more predictable and consistent geometry. Now yes, these tools are great, but every once in a while you just want to fudge it, right? This brings us to our third and final step, manually adjusting loft and boundary connectors. If you're not too concerned about perfectly accurate geometry, or maybe you'd like to fine tune the results of your features, you may be able to achieve an acceptable result by manually modifying the connectors between profiles. While creating or editing a loft or boundary, you'll likely see a single connector on the preview, but remember the system actually creates a connector for each matching set of points in the profiles. To see all of these connectors, right click one of the green handles on the existing connector, then click show all connectors, and the previously hidden connectors should now show on the screen. From here, you can simply left click and drag a connector endpoint to modify it. Changing the position of connection points will remap the geometry accordingly, allowing you to fine tune the shape to your liking. Additional connectors can also be added by right clicking anywhere along either sketch profile and choosing the add connector option. And similarly, any extra connectors that you've added can be deleted by right clicking an endpoint of that connector and choosing the delete connector option. Finally, it should be noted that manually modifying connectors can cause your design to go sideways very quickly, causing errors or complete feature failure. So if you ever need to roll back to the original connector placement, simply right-click a connector and choose Undo Connector Edit to go back one step, or Reset Connectors to return to the default connector placement. These options are super useful as the Undo command will not work inside the feature preview. In this video, we've covered three simple steps for you to improve your loft and boundary features with better geometry and fewer errors. 
For the most success with lofts and boundaries, first, ensure that you're selecting profiles graphically and in consistent locations. Also remember to use the split entities, segment, and fit spline commands as needed to create sketch profiles with a consistent number of entities. Finally, if necessary, make manual adjustments to connectors as needed to fine tune your results. While these three steps may not solve every complex lofting problem, they should certainly help you start off on the right foot. In addition to these tips, consider looking into using start and end constraints, guide curves, and centerline parameters with your lofter boundary features for maximum control and accuracy in your designs. The SOLIDWORKS help articles on these subjects are a great place to start. Do you have any additional tips or tricks for creating loft and boundary features? Make sure to let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please give us a like, subscribe, or visit us at hawkridgesys.com to learn more. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.